This babe is going from a high maintenance copper red color with a permanent root and her natural grown out roots. And what she wants to do is a more low maintenance brunette color. And uh, she wants to do a reverse balayage essentially into her hair today. And I'm gonna show you how I did that. So stick around for this transformation. And also, I have a podcast now called Hair's the Thing, and it's available on Spotify. We do hairdresser interviews, client stories, Reddit stories about client situations, Q&A, advice for hairstylists, and so much more. So please go follow me there on Spotify at Hair's the Thing. So today, I'm going to start out by trying CPR by Malibu. It's color protect removal I don't know something like that but it removes color and it's not bleach based so the way that you use CPR I've read on the back packet probably a hundred times what you do is you start by rinsing the hair and using a clarifying shampoo a couple of times through the hair and that just pulls anything out of the hair that is going to get in the way of the CPR doing its job I like to be extra thorough, especially when I'm going to be doing a color remover because I want to make sure that it gets everywhere evenly and does a really good job of pulling out any extra color in this. So this is my attempt at using CPR and spoiler alert, I didn't find it did a ton. Maybe it did on more of a molecular level, but I don't really honestly find that it did a ton for this client's hair. Maybe her hair already had faded as much as it's really going to before her service. So just a quick note on what my client had beforehand. She came in a few months ago with all of her dark hair and said, I want to be red. And she wanted to be like a more of a copper fiery red, but with a deeper root. So we did a bleach out and then we left her root dark and then did a permanent color over top of that. And then everything that had been bleached we did a more fiery copper brighter red so she had something really fun and funky for a bachelorette trip and then she decided she didn't want the maintenance and she wanted to go something lower maintenance and easier for her so here it is after i've done her clarifying shampoo and rinse i'm applying the cpr and it's mixed with four ounces of warm water and the packet and you just shake it up until it forms a gel and then apply it to the hair all over and then put it under a processing cap under heat for up to 45 minutes. Now I'm about to rinse it out. So before I apply any water, I personally like to use a butt ton of clarifying shampoo to really scrub out any of those color molecules. And it does pull out a little bit of color, but honestly, in my opinion, I feel like I could have done this service without the color remover. I feel like it didn't do quite as much on this client's head as it would have on someone with maybe fresher color because this is the result of the color remover. I feel like it looks pretty well the same. Maybe the permanent color that was up in her roots is lifted a little bit. Maybe it's brightened up a little bit, but overall not super necessary. And look what I got in the mail. I got the new Framar Vibe Check foils. Aren't these the cutest freaking thing you've ever seen in your life? I love them and I can't wait to use them on my client today. So now comes the part where I'm going to be brightening up some of her ends and I'm going to be darkening down her roots and the areas that connect the roots to the ends. So I'm going to be doing a color melt and a wet balayage today. So how I'm starting this is I am sectioning out her hair where the halo is or that well that's what I like to call it some stylists call this a halo where it's essentially the entire perimeter of her hair so it's everything that's around the base of the neck up behind the ear and up around the face it forms this big circle around the baby hairs and the underneath and what this does is it creates a soft looking balayage that has a lot of the blonding underneath and around the face so that when she pulls her hair all forward and it sits on her chest, she has a lot more of that blonde impact. But what's gonna be left up on top is a lot more of the darkness. Now this is actually great for a lot of people who want something that's lower maintenance but still with a blonde impact because then as their roots grow out on the top, it's not noticeable because they have a whole veil of darkness sitting over top of the blonde, but they still have a lot of blonde in the ends and around the face. And when they pull that hair, as I said, again, forward, they get that blonde impact again while still maintaining a low maintenance look. And that's why I really like using this halo method by brightening everything up around here because this is great for also anybody who's a new hairdresser and doesn't want to have any choppiness in their balayage. Always make sure you start with the halo. And 
then the rest of it is basically up to as much contrast as you want in the client's head. So then I'm taking really big sections and I'm leaving out drops. And then this piece right here is where I'm going to connect my halo from one corner of the head to the other. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to take my paddle brush. And what I'm using here today is I'm using Igora by Schwarzkopf. It's another one of their lighteners and 10 volume. And this is on wet hair. And the wet hair is actually going to provide another barrier of protection. So we don't get too much lift. I only really want like a level, a level and a half of lift here. And what I'm doing is I'm sweeping it up onto the outside corners and making it almost like a V shape so that the center back has a little bit more of that depth and darkness. And then the corners attaching to the perimeter halo are a little bit brighter going up. As I work my way up to the apex of the head, I'm going to be taking triangular sections, leaving out big, large chunks and taking big large pieces to do my highlights leaving out big chunks for my low lights because this creates depth and dimension especially when you're going from like a level five to a level seven that's not a ton of contrast unless you create that contrast with bold pieces so pretty much everything is going to be a triangular section because that creates points of interest and it prevents you from getting like stripes in the head especially when you're going with something as bold as this it's important to be using proper sectioning so all of my pieces I'm being sure to blend as much as I possibly can with my board and brush but I'm also not going super super high up with this color because I do want to drop down her root and create more of a root melt color with a very low down balayage effect so the way that I'm sectioning this is I'm doing a corner on each side and then the next piece up is how I'm connecting it with a smaller triangle of brightness. And uh, on my last couple pieces that I have here, I'm going pretty low down because I don't want to bring again the blonde up super high. I've done that more so around the face where I've created that money piece slash halo. And around the back, I want to leave a very low down drop because that's going to leave her with a more low maintenance look and a more of a color melted rooty drop down look. This is the piece that I'm going to be leaving out as what I call a veil. It's going to cascade around all of the hair and it's pretty much everything behind her money piece and around the apex of the head. So I'm going to be putting on my toner and it's a very dark toner, but again, it is going on damp hair. So it's going to be a little bit diluted and it's on a very reddish base of about an inch down from those natural roots is a very hard, dark band of red. So we do need to cover that with some ashy colors, but not all ash because we want to make sure that there's some balance and fill in there. So I'm using Schwarzkopf Vibrance 5.0, which is five natural. 5-4, which means 5 beige, and a 4-1-3, which is a 4 ash green. And green is the opposite of red, so it's going to cancel out that red and make it more brown because we want a natural brown. And I've also mixed it with a 6-volume lotion and gel mixture. 6-volume so that it's deposit only. I don't want to risk lifting her natural root color. I only want to deposit onto this orange and red color. And it's a mixture of the lotion and the gel because I want the consistency not to be too drippy but not to be too thick either. I'm applying it from roots to ends throughout her whole veil and any of those drops that I've left out first. And then what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be applying it to that deeper red band and as far down as I can go for all of those highlight money piece, balayage pieces, anywhere so that I can get as close as I can without actually touching any of the lightener because when color touches lightener, it gets like this really weird, hard red color. I don't know how to explain it. It's like probably something to do with oxidization. I don't really know, but if you know, please explain in the comments to me because I don't know why it does that. Anyways, I don't want my color touching my bleach. So I am just trying to do a heavy root shadow right now and I will connect the two colors later on in the sink because the hard red band is like a level five and then the orange is like a level six and a half. So I'm not super worried about this orange area right now. I will connect that from the roots to the blonding a little later on in the sink. And we don't waste no time here. I'm already at the sink and I'm pulling my client in here and I'm gonna show you a little bit about what I did here. It's a very interesting process. It's not something I usually do because especially I don't typically do really big chunky foiling like this, but I'm explaining what I'm doing here piece by piece. So 
I have my low lights and they're wrapped up in these crunchy little foils here. They're all crunched up into a little ball. And then I have my highlights, which I'm taking one at a time and rinsing them out. And I'm just rinsing it out enough so that the bleach isn't still in there, but we're not shampooing it away. Then I'm taking a bowl of my mixture of my toner formula and I'm making sure to connect that root shadow that I've placed in down to where my blonding is. I'm not super concerned about dyeing the blonde areas too dark because I don't believe that this formula will go super dark. As I was watching it formulate and process on her head, it wasn't darkening super fast when she was in the chair. So I'm not super worried about these orangey blonde areas. Also, because they are still super orange, they can use a little bit of the ash that's in this color to help kind of neutralize and tone. So Yes, on all of the blonde pieces, I'm just trying to connect that orange area between the root and the blonding, and I don't really care if some of that color comes through to the blonde ends a little bit. And any of the low lights, I'm just double checking to make sure we got full saturation on them. And uh, some of the low lights didn't get full saturation, but that's okay because I go over it anyways. And then this is just, I find a really good way to work in the sink on areas that are really big and PC so that you can be very organized about what you're doing. And I chose to do it this way instead of rinsing out her whole head and then going through and searching through all of her head for the exact same sectioning that I did and trying to apply, you know, like this color into the low lights all the way down and then to connect it in the highlights when all of the hair has been washed and reconnected back together. Right now, everything's separated into the sections that I had originally done. So this actually makes it easier and faster for me to do it this way rather than to wash her all out and redo a toning at the chair. Now what happens here in a couple minutes is my camera is going to die because I've been filming for hours at this point. But what's going to happen is my camera's going to die. And what I do after this, because it is organized chaos, is I bring her back to the chair just to dry up a little bit of her hair and see if she likes, number one, the blonde color and the root color. And number two, to see if there's any lingering red that's still kind of showing through underneath of some of the color or if I've missed any spots. So what ends up happening is I bring her to the chair. She loves the colors, but I notice there is a little bit of red from that deeper permanent red band that's about an inch down from her roots, kind of shining through in a couple spots. So I did retake this formula. I added a little bit of 612 to it as well because that dash two has navy in it, which also helps, helps to fight that red tone. And I just reapplied to a couple areas that I felt like it was gonna show through faster. And that totally helped and it totally worked. And once we did that, we rinsed out her hair, did a condition, a blow dry and a quick styling because she had a party to go to. So we had to make today's process pretty quick. And I'm about to show you our afters. And a quick note before I show you the afters, this is what I'm rinsing out that money piece halo. And I do actually take my toner formula and I apply it everywhere just for a couple minutes so that it tones the warmth out of these blonde pieces. And not like all the warmth, just the oranginess so that she still has a natural, warm, chocolatey brown that looks really good on her skin. Here is her after. I am really happy with this result because it has a really seamless flow from her root shadow down into her ends. It looks like a beautiful color melt. If this were my head of hair, I would have personally chosen to have sacrificed the lightness of the blonde color to have something that's a little bit more neutralized and a little less warm, but she did love how bright she got to keep the color and she wanted to stay as kind of blonde as possible in those ends without damaging it. So I think that we got everything that she wanted here. And honestly, if she's deciding later on she wants to neutralize a little bit, she can absolutely come back for a toner service. And I'm more than happy to add in a slightly deeper toner, maybe a level six. Anyways, I'd love to hear what you guys have to say about this. I'd love to hear what formulations maybe you would have tried. Have you tried Malibu CPR before? Did you like it? I want to know all your thoughts in the comments. And also, please remember to like and subscribe and support this channel. We really appreciate it as it is free hair education for everybody. So if you wanted to give back this channel by any means, please like and subscribe and tell all your friends about it. Thank you guys so much for enjoying this video today. I hope you have a lovely evening. Thanks so much.